Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise in the House yet again to raise serious concerns about the Temporary Foreign Workers Program on behalf of uh, people in Alberta. Mr. Speaker, on April the 1st, the Minister of Employment and Social Development responded to my question in the House that no Canadian workers in the oil sands had lost their jobs to temporary foreign workers, and if so, all were immediately rehired. As I was informed by the iron workers, this was patently untrue. On April 28th of this year, I wrote to the Minister seeking more detailed information on the actions by his department in the matter of the layoff of 65 <coughs> Canadian iron workers at the Imperial Oil Curl project site. <clears throat> As is evident from the information provided to the Minister by the International Association of Bridge, Structural, Ornamental and Reinforcing Iron Workers, 720, Canadian workers were in fact replaced by less qualified temporary foreign workers, a violation of the law. And while some of the Canadian workers, Mr. Speaker, did eventually find other employment, many did not. One such person was an Aboriginal apprentice. Regardless, the layoffs were illegal. 300 Canadian workers were reportedly displaced as well at the Husky Energy Sunrise Project under similar circumstances. The obvious question is, Mr. Speaker, what enforcement action has been taken? Five months has passed and the Minister has had not had the courtesy of even replying to my letter. And the displacement of available, highly qualified Canadian workers by temporary foreign workers continues to be a recurring problem, not just in the oil sands, but across Alberta. Both the previous accelerated temporary worker program and the pilot project for Alberta, later extended, removed any obligation for a labour market analysis or proof of labour shortage. Recent reports, including by C.D. Howe Institute and the Parliamentary Budget Officer, raised serious problems with the reliability of labour shortage data. These incidents suggest problems also exist for skilled worker employment data. This is being verified by the number of complaints I continue to receive from Canadian skilled tradespeople unable to get a job, let alone an interview. Serious questions are also being raised about the certification process for temporary foreign workers for skilled trades compared with Canadian workers who have invested time and money in gaining their professional tickets. So the questions that I wish to put today to the House, Mr. Speaker. Which specifically designated federal officers are mandated to inspect and enforce the Temporary Foreign Worker Program? More specifically, which federal officers and in what numbers are mandated to inspect and enforce that program for the oil sands? Third, who is being held accountable and liable for compliance with the Temporary Foreign Worker legislation? The labour brokers, the operators, or the owners? At what juncture is a temporary foreign uh, employment broker paid for a temporary foreign worker when they bring them into Canada? What new measures beyond increased penalties is the government taking to ensure better government oversight to identify, track and respond to violations and to prevent abuses? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment and Social Development. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Honourable Member for her question tonight. Uh, our message to employers has been clear and unequivocal. Canadians must always be first in line for any available job. Our comprehensive and balanced reforms restore the Temporary Foreign Worker Program to its original purpose as a short-term last resort for employers when there are no qualified Canadians to fill available jobs. This comprehensive overhaul of the program will significantly reduce the number of temporary foreign workers in Canada. It will improve labour market information and correct labour market distortions caused in the, by the previous program. It will also strengthen enforcement and penalties for employers who attempt to break the rules. Now let me list the reforms that the Minister of Employment announced just this past June. Employers must now also attest that they are aware of the rule that Canadians cannot be laid off or have their hours reduced at a work site that employs temporary foreign workers. Employers with 10 or more employees applying for a new LMIA are subject to a cap of 10 percent on the proportion of their workforce that can consist of low-wage temporary foreign workers. 
Third, applications for the lowest wage, lowest skill entry level occupations in the food services, accommodation and retail trade sectors will be barred from the temporary foreign worker program in areas of high employment, those areas with greater than 6% unemployment. LMIAs for low wage temporary foreign workers will be reduced from a two year standard duration to a one year period, making the program truly temporary. Annex agreements with provinces and territories can no longer be used for employers to avoid labor market screening. Employers will be seeking, who are seeking to hire high wage temporary foreign workers will now be required to submit transition plans which show how they will be hiring more Canadians in the future to fill their available positions. More and better labor market information is, will be available for stronger screening and a new enhanced job matching service which will allow Canadians to apply directly through the Canada Job Bank for jobs that match their skills and experience and provide information to program officers who are reviewing an employer's LMIA application on just how many qualified Canadians have applied for specific jobs. There will be stronger enforcement and tougher penalties for employers who break the, break the rules. There is a massively increasing number and scope of inspections so that one in four businesses employing temporary foreign workers will now be inspected by the Temporary Foreign Worker Program each and every year. We will be increasing the number of requirements that inspectors can review when they review these applications from 3 to 21. We are improving and expanding the Temporary Foreign Worker tip line and creating a new complaints line to better detect when employers have violated the system. Expanding the ability to publicly blacklist employers who have been suspended and are under investigation as well as those who have had an LMIA revoked and are banned from using the program have been put in place. Additional funding for the Canada Border Services Agency to allow for an increase in the number of criminal investigations are also in place. Improving information sharing among departments and agencies involved in the oversight of the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, including provincial and territorial governments, have been established, and we are introducing a significant monetary fine for those who violate the system, a fine of up to $100,000. Those are some of the recent changes we've made to make sure we enshrine the principle that Canadians must always be hired for any available job. Those are a sign of real action made by this minister last June. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I'm disappointed yet again. None of my questions have been answered. All we hear are generalities. So I would put again to the Parliamentary Secretary, on to the Minister, I hope, um, where's the overhaul of the skilled worker program? By and large, all the reforms that were made were to the lesser skilled program. We're still waiting. Um, as the member is likely aware, uh, the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers have now entered the fray and joined forces with the iron workers and other workers, including welders, who are deeply upset with the way this, the, the temporary foreign worker program is being applied to their area of work. Uh, the Boilermakers have put forward ideas re for reform. They'd like to replace the international broker companies with the unions actually running the temporary foreign worker program to make sure Canadian workers are not displaced. Um, I look forward to hearing response to what they are saying to the Boilermakers. I would actually like to also put a final request uh, to the Parliamentary Secretary to pass on to the Minister. Would he be willing to table in the House what enforcement actions have actually been taken against the owners and operators and brokers in the oil sands regarding the violations of the Temporary Foreign Worker Program? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, those questions are coming from a member that if she had her way would shut down the oil sands and eliminate all those jobs that Canadians would be performing. Now, while we've made comprehensive and balanced overhaul to the program, the Liberals and the NDP have been incoherent about where they stand while inundating our government with requests for temporary foreign workers in their own writings. They are voting in favour of an expansive moratorium on the program while demanding changes to the program. They voted against all of the previous reforms to tighten the access to the temporary foreign worker program and all of our previous efforts to crack down on employers who abuse this program. Now, these reforms will require that employers make greater efforts to recruit and train Canadians for available jobs. These initiatives, like the Canada Job Grant, will ensure that the program is only used to provide temporary help where clear and acute labour shortages exist and Canadians are not available for the job. I encourage the member opposite that if she is aware of abuses, to call the tip line 1-800-367-5693 or email integrity at servicecanada.gc.ca. Any employer who misuses this program 
will be publicly named and shamed on their blacklist and be banned from the program and face other consequences. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.